The traditional way of getting uh, a lot of these kind of live streaming workflows to be uh, more resilient and more reliable is to kind of just duplicate those steps out, is to have kind of multiple uh, components or multiple pieces of infrastructure doing every step along that chain or doing groups of those steps along the chain uh, and then having the failover be switching from one set of components over to another set of components. And I think what the cloud gives you is an interesting way of looking at it is it not necessarily having, say, going from a light blue to a dark blue to a darker blue and having failover do nothing but think of, uh, think of switching between entire legs, but thinking about failover within individual sets. Uh, and then there were talks yesterday uh, looking at the concept of the kind of microservices, and it's not quite that far, but it's if you look at the individual steps along that workflow and then think of failover between each individual steps along that workflow, you can build something that's a lot more resilient and reliable than the kind of a traditional workflow where you're having just a kind of an A and a B leg and your failover is essentially switching between one and the other. Uh, so the kind of the core message that we'll go on to, we have some examples that I want to go through as well, but it's like, you know, your resilience is basically built out of having redundancy and then failover between that redundancy. Uh, and that simple form of that is just to have a duplicate of what you're building uh, and then switching manually between the A and then the B. But what we want to get to, I think what the cloud can enable, is having a better form of that resilience, which is having something which is a cloud-native architecture, which utilizes some of the auto-scaling that's possible some of the healing that's possible with auto-scaling groups uh, when you're kind of architecting that way, and then trying to get as much of that failure to be automatic as well. So the, the reason this slide has kind of enabled it for chaos is Netflix made famous within a lot of their architecture, which they've open sourced, this concept of chaos engineering, which is the, uh, the idea that you're gonna have a steady state, which from a live streaming point of view should be that your audiences continue to be able to watch your live output. Uh, and regardless of any disruptions within that uh, architecture or workflow that you've got, so if components are failing or if network connections are failing, as long as your audiences can carry on watching that live stream, you've developed an architecture which essentially is kind of a, a chaos monkey proof. So you know you can have you can be killing components within there, and your audience still watch the live stream. So that should be the goal: uh, not having to, n not noticing something has failed, or making sure your audience doesn't notice something has failed, even if you do. And then you can concentrate on fixing it, knowing that you haven't actually impacted your, uh, your actual end user. Uh, and then getting essentially back up to that full level of resilience or redundancy uh, with an invisible impact to your end user. And then you're, you're hitting your targets of being up uh, ideally 100% of the time if you're looking at a kind of a 24-7 uh, streaming scenario.